Thank you, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to share some of our recent studies about a surface water feature at uh, lunar magnetic anomalies. Uh, as we heard before, you know, all magnetic anomalies have swords, but uh, most of them have swords. Yeah, so as we know, the surface water has been detected by uh, both orbital and Earth-based IR data. Uh, so there is no debate currently. I don't think there is any debate about uh, the presence of a water on the lunar surface. Uh, however, uh, three possible origins for water on the surface has been proposed. Uh, that's uh, solar wind implantation, like water ridge uh, impacts, and interior degassing. So, I assume this schematic plot I modified from uh, Peter and Novo paper. Uh, I included degassing and impacts in the solar wind. Uh, the Apollo sample suggests that solar wind may be the major contributor to the lunar surface water. Uh, however, as we heard, thank you for the questions. <laughs> Let's explain, like, as you have a magnetic anomaly on the surface, you can uh, block solar wind implantation. So that uh, essentially can suppress uh, the uh, water feature if uh, solar wind implantation is a major contributor of the lunar surface water. Because, you know, you don't have this part, uh, and it, compared with the background, you should be able to see the uh, suppression. So that's what uh, we are going to test uh, in this study. Uh, again, uh, for the data, uh, for magnetic data, uh, we use uh, uh, the Tanaka -wa, uh, model. So it's like a spherical harmonic degree, 450, like a 200 kilometer altitude. Uh, for water, uh, we derive the absolute water content from uh, the absorption feature at a 2.86 micron bands of MQB data. And uh, as shown in this plot, this is a lab spectra uh, collect uh, at samples with the different water content. You can see if there's no water, there's no absorption. You have more water, you have a strong absorption. So you can uh, correlate the absorption strength with absolute water content uh, in a very nice linear trend. So this lab study can provide a very robust uh, model for us to derive the water content. And uh, there are two updates in this study. So uh, previous studies, we only use uh, OP2C data. And uh, now we are able to incorporate all the rest of four uh, OPS. So there are five optic period data. And also uh, we use uh, uh, the minimum phase pixels versus like before we just average the repeating pixels. The, the changes are subtle, but it, yeah. Uh, for results, uh, now we compare our orbital data as the uh, gray uh, bars compared with the lab measurements in past like 50 years. And we found that maybe we have some under, slightly underestimation of the water content. It's like around 20 ppm, you can see. So orbital data give you a value around a 20, some number, but uh, the lab measurements give you 40 to 60. So we just add a 20 ppm to each pixel, and this helps to show the relative variation for, uh, for low water content case because at a lower latitude, uh, the water content is very low in our mapping results. And here's the mapping, uh, here's the map, global map. It has been stretched to better uh, present the water at a lower latitude, but you can still see a lot of uh, pixels. There's no color means no water content. Overlay on the magnetic anomalies map, uh, the base map is uh, black white. So any uh, white color means a stronger magnetic field. Uh, what you can see is uh, the strong magnetic anomalies means uh, the white pixels, uh, you, see, you can see very strong uh, water suppression. Uh, however, the spatial resolution of the magnetic data is very low, it's like two pixels per degree. So it's very hard to perform like a quantitative comparison globally. Uh, we just pick up three locations uh, at, uh, this is uh, Ranagama, we just heard in previous talk. And uh, this is a graph, Movich, and this is Ari. So we are going to examine them in detail. Now here are the results uh, at a Renagama. Uh, this is a WAC a mosaic. You can see beautiful swirl pattern. And uh, this is a magnetic data. You can see a strong magnetic anomaly, and uh, there is a tail that's very weak. And uh, this is a water map. Uh, those colored pixels are indicating their uh, water content overlay on the uh, magnetic anomaly. And uh, this is the temperature used to uh, correct uh, m cube data. I will come back later uh, because this is very important. And uh, here's the as most uh, average of all pixels uh, from the center of magnetic anomalies and uh, like uh, to like uh, far away from the magnetic anomalies. You can see uh, in the blue, uh, no, in the red line is the 
the magnetic field strength drops from the center to as you go away from the, the magnetic anomaly. And here's the water content you can see it's low in the center and it gradually increase. It shows beautiful anti-correlation, very strong. Uh, we can see like a water suppression correlate with the magnetic anomalies, but uh, not a correlated with the swirl patterns, right? So this is swirl pattern is like elongated, but it is a circular. And also we don't see any correlation between the water map uh, feature with uh, the temperature. So water container, water map and a temperature map, they are uh, not correlated with each other. And uh, here's ARI, similar story. So it, this, the swirl pattern at ARI is not well de developed, you can see here. But you can see the magnetic anomaly is very strong, so it's like a, it's like a opal shape. And here's a water map overlay on the magnetic anomaly map. You can see there's almost no water here. And this is a temperature map. Again, you don't see a temperature map showing similar pattern as water map. And uh, this is uh, the uh, again uh, as motho uh, like averaging. This is a profile for a magnetic field strong in the center, and then. You don't have uh, magnetic anomalies as you go farther away, and the water content is zero, almost zero in the center, and then increase as you go out of the magnetic anomalies. So it's still very uh, good on the correlation. And here is uh, Grassi-Movich. Uh, this is interesting because it, although it shows a very strong uh, magnetic field, it's like even higher than Renagama, but you don't see very well developed uh, uh, swirl patterns. This is a high phase. Uh, if you look at a normalized uh, like albedo, you may see some uh, swirl patterns. Anyway, it's not well developed. Uh, there are th uh, three strong field uh, here, here, and here. And here is water map overlay on the magnetic map. Uh, there is uh, uh, like missing data. And here's a temperature map. Uh, so we examine two uh, locations. Well, what two? Uh, Anomalies, this one and this one. And uh, for this one, we only do the average from zero to 90 degree because you know you can be affected by the other two. And for this one, we do like 180 uh, degree azimuth uh, averaging. It's a similar story as Ari and Renegama. You can see strong magnetic anomaly uh, field. You see no, almost no water. As you go out of the magnetic anomalies, you see the increase uh, of water content. Uh, so as we heard, I think a lot of us, we know, uh, there are a few models to deal with the thermal correction of M cubed data. So like the interpretation of the water band, uh, it's really model dependent. Uh, so for higher temperature, if you use higher temperature to correct M cubed data, you can correct more uh, readings and then give you like a stronger water absorption. Uh, however, we know the true temperature uh, for correcting the data uh, should be dominantly controlled by like time of the day at uh, what time you collect the data, uh, the surface albedo, this is the input of the model, and also surface roughness, so like sh uh, shadowing effects. Uh, for thermal correction at uh, the magnetic anomaly and the surroundings, we know the time of day uh, effects can be ignored because they are collected at the same time, that same spot. And uh, uh, the similar surface roughness has been suggested by the vendor data, so we also do not have to worry about a surface roughness. The so that means the temperature may only vary with the strong albedo variation. That's a strong, that's the swirl patterns. So not, uh, not uh, related to any magnetic field. However, what we observe is the water suppression matched with the magnetic field has no association with the temperatures. So there's two of them has no correlation. And uh, so, and also we observe that the temperatures for cracking M cubed data uh, in the magnetic field and outside of it is almost no difference. That's ex expected because there are similar materials at a same location collected at the same time. So the temperature should be very similar. And also, as I said, like water variation not associated with temperature because the temperature correction make the, the water pattern, the, the absorption. So if they are not coupled with each other, the water variation should represent the true feature, at least relatively. On the other hand, we do a model to test, so like to show similar amount of water within the magnetic field, and you need around like a eight to 20 Kelvin higher temperature in that field, in that magnetic uh, anomaly region than the surrounding regions. 
and there is no reason to believe why the, the, the circular size, the magnetic field should have higher temperature than strontium. There is no reason to believe that. Now here is the modeling results at Rena Gamma, so you need an eight Kelvin higher at, at, in the magnetic field to create similar amount, similar amount of water as strontium. For area, you need a 17 Kelvin higher than strontium to give you similar amount of water. And for Grassimovich, you need like almost 20 Kelvin. So there is no reason to believe why it should have like 10, 20 Kelvin higher at those regions. And uh, we <coughs> feel this may tell us that the magnetic field may play different roles on the formation of water and swirls because as we said, swirl patterns are seen at both uh, the strongest magnetic field and a, low, and a weak magnetic field at a random gamma. However, uh, at uh, Grasimovich, the magnetic field is even stronger at Rena Gamma, but we don't see very well developed uh, swirl patterns. However, we see water suppression at all examine a strong magnetic field normally. But we need more data to understand why it performs differently on the formation of water and uh, uh, the formation of swirls. So in conclusion, uh, we see strong water suppression at water at magnetic anomalies and are suggesting that magnetic field may have reduced solar wind flux and prevent the formation of uh, uh, water on the uh, surface, and uh, solar wind implantation could be the major contribution to the surface water. And a magnetic field may play different roles on the formation of water and uh, uh, swirls. Uh, so we see uh, strong suppression in water content at all strong magnetic anomalies, but not, a, not, not all strong magnetic anomalies showing uh, well-developed swirls. And we need more data to understand the structure of the, those uh, magnetic fields to understand why it performs differently. That's it, thank you very much. Questions? You have oh a boy. question, <laughs> Carly, and then. Uh, very nice work, Shui. Um, uh, and you've, you've shown very nicely how the magnetic and the, the, the water are anti-correlated. Um, two questions. One, um, you suggested that there's no direct link to ac the actual form of the swirls themselves. Um, and the question is, could that simply, or not, be due to the lower resolution of the magnetic anomalies. Yeah, that's possible. And also can be related to the structure of the magnetic field, right? So it's the orientation right. of the magnetic field lines. Yeah, uh, we don't know. We need more data to understand yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> we need more data, multiple phases, et cetera. Yeah. Well, the second question relates to your answer to that, um, that there are some magnetic anomalies. I'm thinking of the two in Crisium that don't have swirls associated with them. And if you haven't looked at those, please look at those because I, I, er, when I've tried to look at them, I didn't see any water variation, but you may with your, your better approach. Yeah, I will check, but I don't see water feature there. You don't? No. So, so okay, so this may be the orientation issue that in terms of the magnetic uh, uh, field. Could be, yeah. Okay. Right, we have got, I think, four more questions very quickly. Sec for a second one from here. Oh, I, this is just out of curiosity. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea if, if, hypothetically, if you turned off the solar wind, how long would it take the swirl patterns to disappear? I don't know. I mean, like, I, I know the magnetic, few, magnetic anomalies are there for billions of years. So the, the magnetic anomalies are very old. I'm not sure like, how long it would take to form the swirl pattern or hydration accumulation. But it's good to know. We needed to go there at a date. So you kind of answered my question already with uh, Carly, but I was wondering, so you didn't consider the direction of the magnetic field at all in your analysis? No, because the resolution currently we have is too low. We cannot resolve the, the orientation of the magnetic field. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think that that makes a big difference in terms of the solar wind implantation. So it's something to consider if you're looking at that as a mechanism for um, your OH concentration. Thank you for the suggestion, yeah. Uh, can you go back to your first results slide that shows your map? Oh. It just looks different from your published one. Oh yeah, it's, as, as I said, I stretched. 
<laughs> oh, you said it's stretched. Okay, yeah, I because I want to show the low water content. This is a very low. You can see like a 10, 20 ppm. So that's almost a detection limit. Okay. Yeah. Because it looks like it goes up clear almost to the yeah. equator. Yeah, well, like in the paper, in my 2017 paper, that's essentially cut off like any value below 75 or 50, I think, yeah. Okay, yeah. and now so, you're going up to like 20. Yeah, so okay. this is a, has been stretched to show them. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Right, really quick one, please. It's not quick, I'll talk to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good answer. Let's, yeah. let's thank them. Thank you.